Open Case Let's start the story today with an open case 17 years ago. In November 2003, at Australia's southwestern coast, researchers caught a three miles long female great white shark. They installed a sensing device on its dorsal fin to collect data on the ocean's temperature and depth, a shark's migration condition, and others. But this humble experiment becomes weird four months later. That day, the device displayed the shark suddenly dove abnormally from 250 to 580s below sea level. At the same time, the device also displayed the surrounding temperature rose suddenly from 8 to 26 degrees Celsius. Soon after, scientists found the device a dozen kilometers away from the beach without any trace of the shark. After this incident, an explanation spread it among scientists. After analyzing the data, they suggested the incident has only one possibility. The 3M long shark was attacked by a mysterious predator when swimming at 250 meters depth. After the predator devoured the shark in one bite, it dove back to 500 millimeters depth, which was where it lived. For the next few days, the shark had digested thoroughly while the anti-corrosion device was excreted and collected by the researchers after rafting on the sea for some time. A three-long shark is a top predator in the ocean known by humans. But the data collected suggests that it was devoured by something bigger in one bite. Later in 2014, a documentary director, David Riggs, heard this story from the researchers when shooting a documentary. He was instantly attracted by the story and kept on asking what kind of creature is capable to devour a three mandos long shark in one bite. Researchers replied, it was probably hunted down by another bigger shark. This is the only plausible explanation, as we have very little knowledge of the ocean, including our limited knowledge of the shark. David further asked, Is it possible that it was Megalodon's doing? The researchers smiled without replying. Another open case. Next, let's continue with another open case. Six years ago, on 10th May 2014, Nereus was exploring under the ocean. It was built by Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, which costs 8 million US dollars. It was humans' top-notch technology. That afternoon, in Kermadec Trench, northeast of New Zealand, Nereus reached 900-900 malarmediates depth at the second deepest trench in the world. Then, it discovered a seabed and continued to explore further. At 99977 sam depth, it extended its robotic arm to collect a sea cucumber on the seabed. Suddenly, the camera vibrated vigorously, followed by a blackout and then lost connection to it. In 2009, Nereus had dived into the deepest place in the world, the Challenge Deep of Mariana Trench, with a record of around 11,000 meters depth. That time, it withstood 1,000 times of atmospheric pressure and wandered at the Challenger Deep for more than 10 hours. So, scientists were confident that it was easy for Nereus to dive at 99900 meters depth this time. There should be no problem. Besides, it will surface automatically if it lost connection to it for 30 minutes. So, 30 minutes had passed, 3 hours had passed. The scientists started to get anxious, as they worried they had lost Nereus, the human's top-notch technology. Then, 10 hours had passed, 20 hours had passed, scientists anxiously searching for Nereus, Based on their calculation, Nereus should have surfaced by that time. Then, scientists saw a few plastic chips were rafting on the ocean. Desperately, they recognized those plastic chips were Nereus. They didn't lose it, but instead, it had exploded. Why does it end up like this? It can operate for more than 10 hours at 11,000 meter depth smoothly. But why this time, it exploded at only 99900 meter depth? Scientists had no clear answers for it but could only suspect an internal explosion. Then, an anonymous post spread widely on the internet, suggesting a mysterious creature had bitten Nereus and caused the explosion. 
What kind of monster can damage Nereus at 9900 depth with only one bite? Perhaps those unknown undersea creatures are far beyond our imagination. Urban Legend Back to 21st January 2009, on the coast of Hawaii, a pair of father and son recorded an urban legend. In the footage, his son was fishing on a fishing boat and then said, Look, what is that? Next, he zoomed in his camera and saw a gigantic whale remain. Its lower body was gone completely, like it had taken a bite from something. This footage then spread widely on the internet. At the same time, an urban legend arose. The prehistoric megalodon hasn't gone extinct. They still live in the deep ocean. Only they can bite off such a big whale. America's Discovery Channel and UK's The Guardian had seriously discussed this urban legend before. The answer that scientists gave the media was very subtle. In short, the conclusions were as below. First, Megalodon did exist at around 23 million years to 3.6 million years ago. Second, Megalodon's tooth fossil was discovered in many places around the world, if these teeth were to be used to estimate its original size. Then, a Megalodon is estimated to reach 30 meters long, weighted over 100 tons with the most powerful bite force in the currently known world, 35 tons, 10 times of T-Rex's bite force. Fourth, there are fossils that prove Megalodon mainly feed on whales and other giant sharks. Seems like there is one question that both sciences and urban legend need to answer. Does Megalodon still exist? Is it the one who devoured the shark? Is it the one who caused Nereus's explosion? For these questions, let me share another two real stories with you. Giant monster in northern sea kraken was described as a gigantic crab by ancient European sailors. Sometimes it is strong like a whale. Sometimes it is terrifying like a squid. It can drag a ship into the seabed in one go, blasting the ship into small pieces. Before they can even have a look at it, they were swept into the ocean by whirlpools and its tentacles. Those who luckily survived will warn that if one day you manage to catch a lot of fish at the northern sea, Please leave that place quick, because you are probably fishing on top of a kraken, and those fish are its breakfast. Before it gets mad with you, leave there quickly. After the enlightenment of modern science, scientists all think that kraken's legend is just creative writing. It is impossible to have such a giant squid in the ocean. But later, under some coincidence, they realized that such giant squid does possibly exist and there are numerous of them deep in the ocean. The coincidence is ambergris. Ambergris is one of the highly graded spices. Early in the era of Emperor Taizong, it was highly demanded by the courts from all around the world. The ancients saw it as the essence of nature. It can be found on the beach occasionally. But according to Mao Kun map, there is an island named Socotra at Arabian offshore. The residents there collect ambergris for living for hundreds of years. They told Zheng He that ambergris is actually sperm whale's excrement, and they search for ambergris by chasing after them. Only until the 20th century, Zheng He's record was confirmed by the scientists. Ambergris is the sperm whale's metabolite, after devouring mollusks like squids and cuttlefish. These mollusks all have a sharp and hard beak that can't be digested by the sperm whale, as it will puncture the whale's digestive tract the whale will secrete a substance to wrap up those beaks. After some times, these beaks will be excreted by the whale together with the secretion. After soaking for decades, even hundreds of years in the ocean, it is then washed up on the coast and becomes the essence of nature, ambergris. In 1993, scientists researched caught 17 sperm whale and found a total of more than 29,000 mollusks' beaks in their digestive tract. From this discovery, scientists realized that the reason they dive deep into the sea is to hunt for these giant mollusks. How big these giant mollusks actually are? After researching those beaks, scientists were astounded. A hundred years ago, humans had once found a giant living squid 
about 20 minamaras long. It is the largest sea creature that humans have ever found, the Archituyuthis ducks. And there are tens of thousands of these giant squids in these whales' digestive tracts. Then, more astounding facts were found by scientists. In 1982, scientists found a stump of giant tentacles in a sperm whale's stomach. Initially, the scientists thought it was a giant squid's tentacle. After some observation, they realized that the tentacle suckers have barbs, meaning it wasn't a squid, but a cuttlefish instead. Squids have thicker legs, while cuttlefishes have thinner legs. If a cuttlefish has thick legs like a giant squid, then the size of the cuttlefish might close to the size of a kraken. Later, scientists named this cuttlefish as Mesonychotuthis hamiltoni. Second Real Story Next, let's continue with the second real story. On Christmas Eve in 1938, South African fishermen caught a weird fish at the Comoro Islands. Its body is fully covered by scales like armor. Its tail looks like a short spear, and it is very aggressive. No one had seen this fish before. After struggling on the deck for four hours, it stopped moving. Then, a sailor poked it boldly, and it bit the air loudly. After returning to the port, a researcher from a museum, Miss Latimer, bought it and made it into a 1.5 meter long specimen. She then finds Smith, a professor at the University of Cape Town. Smith also didn't know about this fish and requested for a fish autopsy to identify its species. During the autopsy, his hands were trembling as he getting excited. He couldn't believe this fish in front of him is a chelicanth. It is the ancestor of all vertebrate animals. It is the transition species between fish and tetrapod. It was thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago. Some said Smith was too excited and fainted on the experiment table. After waking up, the first thing he did was offering a 100-pound reward, RMB $200,000, NT $830,000, RM $120,000, to catch this fish. After 14 years, in 1952, the second Quilacanth was caught. The news spread to South Africa. President Daniel Milan ordered warships and aircraft to escort them and he welcomed them personally at the airport. It was said that, after the president saw the fish, he commented, Ah, this is how our ancestors look like. In these two real stories, Quilacanth, that thought to have gone extinct, is rediscovered. The unknown sea creature, Mesonychotuthis hamiltoni, has also been found. So, back to the two open cases in the very beginning, many enthusiasts believe that Megalodon still exists. In the incident in 2003, Megalodon is the one who devoured a shark in one bite. Besides, enthusiasts also believed that the one who caused Nereus's explosion was also an undiscovered prehistoric shark. This shark not only has a powerful bite, but can also dive very deep into the ocean. It sounds similar to one of the known deep sea sharks. Let's us continue. Goblin shark. Scientists suggests that this shark has lived in this world for around 130 million years, from the Cretaceous until now. It is a very primitive animal with a long snout, a protrusible mouth and untrimmed teeth. It looks very similar to a goblin. Scientists even speculate that it can at least dive to 2000 meters depth as its skin has evolved into a translucent form and is blood red in color. The currently caught goblin shark was pink in a horrifying way. Besides, the way it hunts is very monstrous. It looks like an alien, as it can extend another mouth from its mouth to bite its prey. Actually, this is how the goblin shark makes use of its uniquely structured jaw to increase its mouth capacity. This will exert negative pressure and pulls its prey into its mouth. With this negative pressure and its powerful bite, it might be the one who caused Narius's explosion. Besides, with its ampulla of Lorenzini, it can sense electric and magnetic fields in the water. A great white shark can smell a drop of blood that is a few kilometers away is solely because of its sensitive ampulla of Lorenzini. The goblin shark's long snout is specially designed for this purpose. Its sensitivity is over 10 times of the great white shark. 
Therefore, it is challenging for humans to catch a goblin shark. In 1898, the first goblin shark was caught at Sagami Bay, Japan. Then, no goblin shark was found for the next 20 plus years. In 1922, Japan caught nearly hundreds of goblin sharks within five months, followed by 1923's Great Kanto earthquake. In 2010, few hundreds of goblin sharks were caught at Japan's offshore within a few months, followed by 2011's Tohoku earthquake, which leads to a giant tsunami and Fukushima nuclear disaster. Later, scientists observed that the reason goblin shark come up to the shallow sea is related to geological activity, but further proof is needed. Some believe goblin sharks are the spirit of deep sea, as they have lived with our Mother Earth for 130 million years. They have wisdom that not known to us. Sharks are also an ancient species that have lived with our Mother Earth for 200 million years, from the Jurassic until now. Why do humans fear sharks so much? like it has been written in our DNA. Perhaps this is our awe to nature. Whale fall lets us feel the grace of nature. A giant whale will sink into the sea after it dies as a way to give back to nature. Sharks actually will do the same. The moment it stopped swimming, it will sink into the ocean, giving back to nature. But. This is the situation that scientists can see in the ocean nowadays. These sharks lost all of their fins, sank to the bottom of the sea alive and waiting for their death. The reason for all of these is because their fins are a delicacy in humans' eyes, namely shark fin soup. Okay, today the story ends here. Thanks everyone.